With us now is pollster and communication strategist Frank Luntz. And Frank, recently after Trump posted on social media about prosecuting his opponents, you tweeted, message to Donald, focus on helping voters, not yourself. You just heard Christian reporting that allies are concerned that's not so easy for him. Do you think that Harris will be trying to and effectively goading him into talking about 2020 election falsehoods and grievances in this debate? Absolutely. But there's a response to that. And I'm curious to see how prepared these both these candidates are, how disciplined they are, how focused they are on putting out their message. Because Harris is absolutely going to say, let me finish, or I'm talking, or stop interrupting. And Trump has a perfect line for that, which would be, if he was paying attention, um, it Yes, you're talking. You're always talking. And what the American people want is doing. And you're not doing enough. There's the, And there, there's so many of these types of responses that Trump can do. And in his case, what she can do to him is, for all the mothers out there, and the daughters, and the sisters, and the nieces, and the grandchildren, stop interrupting and start respecting. And that's a really powerful statement for her advantage, which is among women. Both of these candidates have glaring weaknesses that I've not seen in the debate situation like this. But both of them have go-to lines and go-to strengths. In Trump's case, his advantage is on the issues, on the policies. In Harris's case, her advantage is her character and her persona. So whichever candidate gets to focus on that advantage is the candidate who wins. And ahead of this debate, Trump's campaign spokesperson Jason Miller said on CNN that it was Harris, not Biden, in charge of the country over the last three and a half years. Do you think that that is a preview of something that Trump may trot out? And do you think that that is effective when it comes to the persuadable voters that Trump is trying to win over? Absolutely not. In fact, Harris's goal tonight, or mission tonight, is to show that she's relevant, is to show that she had some role in the Biden administration, is to be able to prove that she's not only been number two, but is fully prepared to be number one. So I don't believe that argument's going to work at all. In fact, I could make the argument that if Trump does try to say that, he's actually helping Harris rather than hurting her. We asked the public, can you name one thing that... Kamala Harris has done that's had a meaningful, measurable impact on you, and 70% could not. So now he's switching and saying that she's in charge? That would be an awful strategy for him tonight. And it, it's hard to imagine Harris not being asked, certainly being taken to task. We expect that by Donald Trump, but just not even being asked here. We, we expect she will be to account for positions on banning fracking and border security, positions of hers that have changed here in recent years. She repeated her line recently in her interview with Ardana Bash, my values have not changed. Do you think that she's going to have to expand on that? Is that sufficient tonight? It is not sufficient. And she said it three times. And when someone says something three times, I know as someone who studies human behavior and anthropology and sociology, you assert too much that becomes too rehearsed. It's a go-to line. That will absolutely fail if she says that. In fact, it's far better for her to say, is there anyone out there who's not changed their mind on something important over the length of their career? That actually what you want is someone who listens and learns and then leads. What you want is someone who re-examines the issues based on what's happening in the economy, based on what's happening in society. She should turn those changes, because they are changes, into something positive. That I'm not going to tell you the same thing t today that I would have said 20 years ago, because we're not the same country and the conditions have changed. I think that this is would be, for, for again, for Harris, an awful strategy to try to claim again and again that her values haven't changed. And by the way, it's not values, it's priorities. Values tells people what you're about. Priorities explains how you will affect them. So I'm sure that her campaign is probably too busy listening right now, but if she were a, a, an effective debater, she'd focus on the priorities rather than the values.
Um, Trump has debated a female candidate before. We saw that with Hillary Clinton, of course. He, he lost the debate soundly, but he won the election. He has not debated a female candidate since, however, the Supreme Court justices that he appointed overturned federal abortion rights. How is that going to affect this debate, and what can these candidates do about that? These are perfect questions for exactly what the two candidates have to figure out. And, and Trump is at his weakest, and Harris is at her strongest when she's talking about abortion, because that's what turns out younger women. Harris's strongest addition to what Biden was doing was among women, among women 18 to 40. And to keep them, the abortion issue is so important. And for women 55 and older, the number one issue is health care. So that's where she's at her strength. But there are a lot of women who care about inflation. In fact, inflation is the number one issue for the female voter, and that's where Trump is strongest. So for him to talk about shopping for gas, food and fuel, shopping for a house, that every woman wants to have a home, a home, a place to call their own, and under the Biden administration, it's become incredibly expensive. That is where Trump does best among these voters. So. In the end, you talk about the issue where you're strongest, you talk about the attribute where you can make a difference, and Trump should be talking about the failures of the Biden administration, and Harris should be talking about the failures of Donald Trump. In fact, in a single sentence, do you really want this chaos again and again for the next four years? And Trump responds with, are you better off today than you were four years ago? They're so equally matched. They're so Americans so evenly divided that I would argue that tonight's going to be the most important night in American politics, potentially, of the lifetime of you and me. Well, that is quite the setup for this evening. Uh, Frank Luntz, thank you so much. We know then you'll be watching very carefully and curious to hear what you say tomorrow. Uh, thanks again, Frank. And you can follow CNN for complete coverage and exclusive analysis before and after the debate. The ABC News presidential debate simulcast is tonight at 9 Eastern on CNN.